Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, truly wherever our whims take us. Future State, Catwoman, Tron meets Snowpiercer, or some other work involving a train heist, Bacchano, you're making your way methodically up a train that is organized somehow via class. Also just, you know, heist, stealing a train, fun times. All the Batman universe books in Future State deal with the magistrate storyline, or rather the exclusively Batman ones. This is a Gotham ruled by an authoritarian with a penchant for neon accents on clothing, who has outlawed masks, and is also implementing draconian measures to get the people of Gotham back under control. With the help of an elite squad of peacekeepers, originally hailing from a private firm, things have rapidly spiraled out of control. And the Bat books deal with how various characters are handling it or not handling it, reacting to, rebelling, various responses. What year is this? Oh, our tie-in guide will tell us that. Incoming vid at the time of this recording on the Future State tie-in guide. I've got stuff to say, but first, train heist. And even before we get started with that, if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Join us on this comic book journey. I'm Sasha, by the way, hello. This tale comes to us written by Rom V, with art by Otto Schmidt, who also did the colors. Catwoman on a train. Allow me to set the scene for my reaction to this cover, for there are oh so many Future State books, they impacted how I received this cover. So of all the Bat books, Future State wise, Harley Quinn was the first one that I read. It had some bright, vibrant colors. The next Batman, while less lens flary, also had a similar color scheme. More muted, yes, but also with a level of glowing effervescence. I'm telling you this to set the stage for the fact that now in week three, that is the coloration I am expecting when it comes to these Bat books. I've been trained to await some bright, flashy, cyberpunky Eidos retro coloration. So this cover felt a little flat. The colors felt muted and didn't pop with that much vibrancy. The background is also far more in focus than it should be for her riding the top of this high-speed ultra-tech security transport train. It's so you can see it, but it's disconcerting because you feel like it shouldn't be that visible. It should be more blurred, unless they're taking a very scenic route to the prison slash re-education center. Take your time, enjoy watching your freedom slip away. The glitching out font for her name is a cute touch, and I guess her having a cat symbol in her name is just a thing now. She's on the side of the train, but not in a way that makes me feel secure. She looks like she's gonna fall off the next panel. It's a pretty middle of the road cover that doesn't convey all the excitement I'm expecting from a cyberpunk dystopian futuresque tale. But most importantly, would you visit Gotham BBQ? It looks like maybe you could get through a meal and no villains would bother you. Except for maybe the condiment king. That wouldn't be too bad. Maybe he could put some condiments on your BBQ for you. Too long, didn't read, preferred the art gem variant cover. Alleytown, Gotham, several years from now. There is a date, but we're not including that in the comics. That's in the tie-in guidebook. Sorry, my salt for the tie-in guidebook suddenly spilled over. I'll throw some over my shoulder for good luck. They say that if you spill salt, you should throw some over your left shoulder to get in the eye of the devil. That's what I've heard at least. What superstitions have you heard about salt? We open on the people being forced to board this train being separated. Kids at the back, adults at the front. Leave all belongings behind in the bins provided. You board with nothing other than the clothes on your back. They're to be registered and given numbers. This is all being done under the magistrate's orders to return civility to Gotham. These young boys and girls will be shown the path to becoming productive, law-abiding citizens at Whiteport Reformatory. They will work towards the common goal of progress and prosperity in the once great city of Gotham. Once Great. Where have you been? Which Gotham are you going to? You clearly have not been talking to John Kent Superman over in Superman of Metropolis. This guy calls them fascists, but what that captain just described is a combination of a couple of things. But what the main takeaway is supposed to be is that we tie this back to Batman. They're saying that if he was alive, this would never have happened. I do like that these future state books play with the whole urban legend element of Batman. The whole is he a myth in his own city thing? It works well with how Tim Fox, aka Jace, aka the next Batman is operating. As this rabble rouser is beaten, Selina makes what's meant to be a rallying symbol to the crowd, but it's like a little cat with your hand, like one you would cast to make a little shadow puppet. There, there will, will always, always be, be strays. strays. I can't be moved by a shadow puppet cat future state. I'm sorry. I also can't really seem to make one with my fingers. Clearly this is not an entertainment form that I have mastered. Our pontificator is conversing with a Ms. Kenneris, who's there to inspect. And so she's given all deference and clearance. She can go where she wants. Please give them a good report to the magistrate, actually to Peacekeeper 01. She is the Gotham City Council liaison. We learn through well-delivered exposition that this trip to the reformatory takes four hours, which gives us our window for how long we have for the action on this train. I like that Batman lives graffiti tag. The Great Train Robbery. It's nice to see that since that film came out in 1902, Three, that this concept and title is still being revisited today. It's comforting in a way. Good title being used over a century later. Okay, so Selena has this special suit because we've added tech and magnets to help her adhere to the train, etc. Her and her companions are going over the time frame and also the risks. You know, that she's going to be on this high speed train with all these guards. How's she going to get people off? What's the plan? Also, they highlight that most of the passengers are children, so how much help is she going to get? They try to tell her to stick to the shadows or that that's maybe what they should be doing, but she says that the shadows were stolen from them. And also, it implies that she's doing 
doing this in Bruce's memory or legacy. Batman. That's just it, Selena. I know you loved him, but he's been gone for a while now. Maybe you need to let him go. Cat away. So she gets on her cycle and we get panels of her getting ready to jump onto the train, along with little time codes in the panels to ramp up the idea that there is time pressure. Skidmark, did you get it? No. No, no universe or side universe or parallel universe. Should you allow your nickname, your street name, your code name, anything to be Skidmark? Time to start over and just get a new code name. Destroy the multiverse just for a new code name. Anyway, Skidmark and friend. Billy. You guys have to choose between being Billy and Skidmark. I choose Billy. There are sleeper agents on this train to help Catwoman. Tron magnet suit away! With the aid of her Technicolor suit and the boys inside, Catwoman is able to gain access to the train. Hi. Bye. Leo, Chesh, I'm inside the train. Are those cat knee pads? I'm sure they do something, but they are shaped like that. Those are cat knees. That sounds like a fashion choice that I would make, and hence it's probably not one that Selena should be making. Meow. Cat knees. <laughs> now this is all registered by the operators of the train, both the fact that the door has opened an unregistered opening and the fact that they can't get in touch with their guard. Along with sending personnel to check that out, the captain also sends extra guards specifically from Coach 12. He says it's because they're transporting some high-risk passengers, and they just want to be careful because that passenger could cause some extra trouble. He boxed when Miss Canaris wants to see another coach, but since she's there on the authority of the magistrate, lets her go. Meanwhile, Selena has set a new timer for 50 minutes. They've got 50 minutes to the tunnel. All of the destinations on the train were laid out earlier, so we, the audience, know exactly where they're going. We can follow along on the heist. She's going to start working her way up the train and sending people back. And she reveals that no, they're not just planning to get people off of the train, they're going to steal the train. She heads to Coach 12, where we see our prisoner, whom she recognizes right away as Onomatopoeia. Because, well, he greets her by saying blip bloop. I have to say, of all the people to find on the train, of all the characters to highlight, Onomatopoeia was a surprise. The last time I saw him, he was murdering Silver St. Cloud by slitting her throat on panel. Oh, and finding the Teen Titans. Can't forget that. He's a serial killer who first appeared back in Green Arrow number 12 in 2002. His deal is that he focuses on non-superpowered vigilantes, and also that he speaks only in sound effects. Pew pew. Pew pew. What's the appropriate sound effect for a train heist? <gasps> choo choo. Chugga 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 choo choo. The slit. She frees him, saying if he helps her fight her way to the front, he can walk away, no questions asked. He uses some blood from the guards to remake a mask for himself. He wears a bullseye mask. Scribble. That's not the sound that blood on cloth makes. Try harder. Whip, whip, kapow. I can never take onomatopoeia fully seriously for this reason. <laughs> is he actually saying whip, whip, or is it supposed to be like whoosh, whoosh? Either way, I'm not sure which is better or worse. <laughs> This panel looks cool though. Not on this train, not under my command. And we get our reveal. Miss Canaris kills the guard that had taken her over to a coach that we had been led to believe via clever misdirect was coach 12, but it wasn't. They just said the next coach over. It was revealed when Selena found Onomatopoeia. Well played comic, well played. And so she removes her wig to reveal that Talia al Ghul lives wig life. Also that she's there to save the train's secret prisoner, Bruce Wayne. Next, the Batcat Express. Yes sir, please, I'll have another. Future State Catwoman surprised me. It surprised me in how enjoyable I found it. It is a plot that has been done again and again. Train heist. Even the train shenanigans in a dystopian setting, not new. So while this is not necessarily new ground, it is a well-structured piece. It lays out its exposition and situational details well, in a way that doesn't come across as info dumpy. The people who are being told information have a reason to be talking about it or asking about it. There's a built-in and established sense of time pressure. And it's driven home both by the time codes and characters referencing being on schedule and syncing up timers and the like. So you feel that there are some stakes. You have the whole multiple plots and people on the train for various purposes who don't know about each other. And you know that they all have various emotional connections with each other as well. What's gonna happen when they meet up? I said it felt very Bacchano, which for me is a huge plus. Because this was so self-contained, it paradoxically made the magistrate framework more interesting. This was by using it as an accent to the tale and to build drama and tension, rather than focusing on it rather than the main plot of whatever the issue is meant to be, say as what happened in Future State Robin. Onomatopoeia is a random curveball though. Will he try to kill Bruce when he sees him? Curious. The other side characters are there serving a function, so characters don't feel gratuitous. This feels like a classic Elseworlds tale in the sense that it could seemingly stand alone. Alone, meaning it could just be an idea that was thrown out there, you read it, one and done, finished. With those seeds of something that may be interesting to be pursued in a longer tale or the like. 
as it stands, it does some decent world building into magistrate ruled Gotham, which comes together more and more the more future state you read. But this is a good solo one to read as it doesn't leave you feeling as high and dry as some of the others, even though it drops you off in the middle of the action just as those do. But it does have a more firm, confident framework. But that's not to say it's flawless or for everybody. As mentioned, this is hardly breaking new ground, and it could be viewed as derivative. It does rely on you having some prior knowledge of the characters and the relationships to build some of the tension and drama, as well as to keep one invested in plots that they may have seen before. For some, this may be the train heist AU they didn't know they needed or were waiting for. But for others, it may not be enough to grab them, or they won't be interested in seeing the scenario that they potentially may have seen many times before play out again with a Batman coat of paint. And there are some who are just avoiding future state altogether, feeling that there's just too much or that a lot of it is destined not to matter. Or they may just not have been interested in this issue, or felt that it was a bizarre plot or sidestep. Future state takes some interesting turns. Different strokes for different folks, and I want to hear what you think. What do you think of future state Catwoman? A fun, familiar romp? Or a derivative, unnecessary journey? Or something in between? Do you approve or disapprove of the cat knees? Let me know everything down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to spend it discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.